Now today's video is about tubeless tyre systems. Now we've seen them clean up in the Paris Roubaix in 2022. They cleaned up in the women, they cleaned up in the men with running tubeless tyre systems. But before we jump into the video and talk about tubeless tyres, I do have some international news that's quite concerning and it's about Hambini. And we know Hambini has a very big reputation. He is renowned for bottom bracket reaming and he has an exceptional tool and he can get the tolerances really fine when it comes to bottom brackets. But he's been playing with other systems lately and now he's moved on to spindles and he's doing a bit of footsie work around those. And with this transition to a different technology, unfortunately he's managed to break his hairdryer. Now he's so distraught over this that Pete Talks had to fly in from Hong Kong. He's now in the UK. He's consoling Hambini. We saw him do a video on disc brakes just recently and he's just managed to have enough time to be able to put out his videos because he's spending so much time looking after Hambini. And apparently the problem is that he's having a bit of an issue with his hairdryer and it's something to do with him being able to get it plugged in correctly. I don't know what that may be, but uh, best, wish, best wishes to Hambini and hope he gets well soon. So let's roll an intro and let's get into tubeless tyres. Now tubeless tyres are gone for a, no, a number of adaptations. Now they've been subtle and probably to the untrained eye you probably wouldn't have seen them but years ago tubeless tyres used to be pretty heavy and the reason is that people think that the tubeless tyre is actually held on by the hooks but that's actually not true. That That is just to help the tyre not spread. It gives us something to clip onto. The reason why the tubeless tyre stays on the rim without a tube is because they put threads around the tyre that are unstretchable. So the tyre cannot stretch out of that receptacle that's the U-shape that the rim makes when the tyre is fitted into it. But to do this, the tyres were pretty, pretty stiff and weren't that comfy and they had different types of rims. They were just putting them on clincher rims. The adaptation of the tyres to different rims and different tyres, the standards were pretty awful and some tyres would go on well to rims and work well and some tyres wouldn't, some rims they just they just didn't seem to be compatible. But as time has gone on, manufacturers have really worked hard to change this because they want tubeless systems to be the main system. They want people to move away from a tube and clincher system to a tubeless system. That's what the manufacturers are aiming for. And I think it's more about manufacturing ease rather than customer operational ease because the the systems now have got pretty complicated even though now they've got them to work pretty effectively. <laughs> so what's involved in the modern day tubeless tyre? Well the first thing is is they've modified the rims and the rims now have got wider and they also have a channel in the centre so it makes it much easier to get that tubeless tyre in because they can't be stretched, that's what we need to understand. So what they've done is they've put like a trough that's in the middle of the tyre which never used to be there years ago. So when you're fitting the tyre on the rim you can put that, that rib down in there and it gives you a little bit more extra space to get the tyre on the other side of the rim. So they've adapted that and they've also improve the construction of the tyre. So now the tyres, they're not as heavy and clunky as they used to be. They've got them down so they're much lighter and they give a much better feel when you're riding. They don't give that real concrete feel that they used to have years ago. So they're really improving the tyre. But the biggest problem, and I've said this in videos before, is the sealant. The sealants do have an issue of being able to work at pressures really above 60 psi. And the reason why I say 60 psi because I've used, I use them in tubulars a lot and I find that sometimes the sealant, it works, it seals, but as you ride them like a week or two, 
they can't hold over 60 psi. They, that seems to be around about the area of the limit of the sealant. Once you go above that, the pressure just becomes too significant for the plug the sealant's made to hold and it blows out and starts leaking and then it reseals. It's not like the tire goes completely fat, but you go for this cycle of losing pressure, it goes down, then you can pump it up, then it lasts a little while, and then of course you go through this cycle of continually fixing the hole and then it blowing out, fixing the hole, and the tire just won't hold pressure really above 60 psi. So to combat this, what the manufacturer has done is they've designing tires now that are much bigger and you can get the same rolling resistance and the same performance from your tire as you do with a skinnier tire but the volume of the tire now is more and the pressure is lower so you can have more volume at a lower pressure and you get the same thing as a higher pressure and a smaller volume so that's what they've done so this is the i i believe this is the main reason why now the tires have got bigger it's the adaptation of tubular system which are uh, hooked and hookless So we recently have had another technology, another innovation entering the tubeless tire market and quite a number of the pro teams in the Paris Bay were using this and it's a product that's been developed by Victoria and it looks like just like what the mountain bike people used to use, an insert, but it's actually, the technology is actually a bit different and the way it works is is that it's designed with a foam that can compress and expand. It's not a, a closed cell foam that the size really stays the same. And it must have a membrane on the outside that stops the air seeping in so it, it can be pressured and closed. So what it does is when you pump your tire up, the this, this tube then shrinks down. So it's, it doesn't interfere with the way the tire flexes and moves. It doesn't it doesn't impact on our road feel and the way the tire works. But then when you get a, a flat and the pressure releases, this insert expands and fills up and it acts as the body of the tire, although there's no air in it, so you can keep riding. And a number of the teams were using these, some of them with sealant and some of them without sealant. So in conclusion, where are we now with tubeless tyres? And I think they've got them to a point where they're very close to being perfected. But the problem is, is the setup. The setup is considerable and it's quite difficult. And even Victoria themselves claim that fitting these inserts is actually quite difficult. And when you buy the kit, it actually has these special tools to help you get the insert into the tyre. And if you're more interested in about the inserts, I'll leave a link to them up the top. Now, I think what they need to be able to do is get the tyres to run without the sealant. The sealant is messy and you, ha and you have to keep topping it up. It plugs up. You need to take it out. It's corrosive to some materials. If they can get like what they do with a normal car tyre, they just use like a, a top of a sealing glue that they put around the bead that holds the tire just at the beads and then they put the insert in and that's kind of like a a like a loctite it's not a full strength glue but it can be broken but it's enough to hold the tire in position and then you just run the insert in the tire if you get a flat right then you can put you can keep riding if you want to but to repair it then you can just add sealant at that point you can add sealant on the side of the road pump the tire up and then because it's holding the shape, the, the insert doesn't allow the tire to come off the, off the rim, then the sealant can just be puffed up. You can spin the wheel off the bike so it doesn't go all over the bike, and then you've got a repair, and you don't actually have to take anything off the bike. You just basically have a little bottle, and you can put that in. And carrying a little bottle, like the little stands bottles you can get, I think that that's, that's reasonable. That's pretty convenient. And... They could even use these in the pros. I am a big one for not having all these cars follow them. And if they can get a system where it's easy, very easy for them to repair a, a flat tire, or they've got a system where they can just keep riding, then we don't really need all these cars following them. So that's another 
another innovation that could be used actually in the competition in the pro pelotons. Well, anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think about this move towards tubeless? I think they're pretty close. I think they're getting to about 85, 90% there. They still need to standardize the system, which they're working on, and they also still need to develop some way to make it more simple for the average cyclist to be able to install or if they're installed to not have to touch it for the life of the tire. At the moment we still need to muck around with seal it, take it out, put it in because it because it, 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 it goes hard and clumps up and then you've got to add more and then at some point you've got to take it off and clean it all out before you put a new tire on. If you didn't have to put the sealant in, unless you had a puncture like you do with a car, you just have those little tube systems, right? Then it would be a lot better because if you don't get a puncture and you wear your tire out, then you don't have to worry about sealant. You can just take it back to your bike shop, get them to install it if you don't want to get involved with inserts. So that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. And remember to smash, smash, smash the like button and also subscribe down below. If you haven't, don't be a ninja watcher. And I will see you next bit. Cheers.